Hey, this is Frank Taylor. It's nature in your backyard. And it's uh, April 17th, and I'm walking through the woods in my backyard, and man, I smell something. God, what is that? Something stinks. It smells like a skunk. What the heck? I think there might be a skunk near here. Wait a minute. What is that? Phew wee! It's this plant. It's this green plant that looks like a cabbage and it smells like a skunk. Hey, I think I know what this is. This must be skunk cabbage. And by gosh, yes it is. This is skunk cabbage and today's episode is going to be on skunk cabbage and the amazing things that this plant does and in the way it lives is pretty cool stuff. I'm going to take you back a week or two and show you skunk cabbage in the snow. So I'm down here by this creek in this low hollow where the soil is very very wet and damp and you can see that this is the perfect habitat for skunk cabbage. And it's uh, April 15th today. We had a late spring snow. It's about 31 degrees out in the morning. And some of these guys are kind of laid back down under the snow. But you can see how dense it grows up and how thick these plants are and how big these leaves are. So, and I thought I'd come today to, to do this because skunk cabbage actually will sprout in the snow uh, er, very early in the season, um, uh, as early as March. And it has an amazing ability to when it starts to come up to actually melt the snow as it comes through the ground. Now, the skunk cabbage leaves, you can see that nothing has eaten these things all these leaves are are intact and you'd think look at that leafy green stuff how come the deer aren't down here feeding on this stuff or insects and the reason for it is that skunk cabbage has a horrible smell to it and a bad taste and so this is skunk cabbage's way of uh, resisting being eaten by herbivores, animals that, that eat plants. A great skunk cabbage habitat. It's always in these like low places and sort of dark, wet hollows. Um, I usually think of it as more of a, a northern species and it's here in these cool pockets in the Appalachian uh, Mountains and does very, very well here. I also wanted to show you a skunk cabbage flower and the skunk cabbage flowers long before these great big leaves. Look how big these leaves are and look at that stem. But right down here is the flower and the flower is done so I'm going to go ahead and break it out of the ground and show you that the flower really just consists of a leafy cone and the flower was inside and now it's almost like a pine cone inside. And these are seeds of the cabbage, uh, of the skunk cabbage. And this flower has already been pollinated and gone to seed. And the cool thing about the pollination is this flower doesn't smell sweet. It doesn't have nice nectar when it comes out. It smells nasty. And it attracts flies that normally would come and lay their eggs on carrion or dead things and so this has a special niche a special habitat a, a, a special way of, of living instead of uh, trying to con uh, attract pollinators uh, like bees and butterflies that go to plants to get the nectar and then uh, for the plant accidentally carry pollen from plant to plant these guys attract flies and gnats that might normally be attracted to, uh, to, to meat to lay eggs. So it's a very foul smelling uh, flower that goes along with its foul smelling leaves. So 
old-timey naturalists used to do drawings as well as take notes and write down the dates of what they were looking at. This is a skunk cabbage flower, and I drew this to show you some of the uh, differences of how a skunk cabbage flower is different from a standard flower. What I would call a standard flower has a petal, sepals, pistols, um, petals, it's just standard parts, right? And, and bright colored petals. This one has no bright colored petals, no sepals, and it just has this part that's like a little container with an opening in it called the spathe. And then inside the spathe is the spadex, which is kind of the business part of the flower that would include the pollen and the developing egg cells. And this one is now turning into seed. So you might want to try drawing uh, some of the things that you see. It's great practice for art. And if you're an artistic person, it might be fun for you to do that. And it's also a great way to learn because when you have to draw something, you have to observe it very, very closely. So I'm back. I'm sitting on a log here down by the stream. Uh, this is a few days uh, later, and you can see that things have melted and the skunk cabbage has is, is, is grown uh, some more. And I just wanted to review some of the properties of skunk cabbage with you. First of all, one of the big things is it smells like a skunk, and it's got really big leaves. And I'm going to pull off just one leaf to show you how big that is. That is a big leaf, and they're going to get bigger. And these leaves are here right now but they're containing a lot of water. <clears throat> they're doing a lot of photosynthesis, but they don't have a lot of cellular matter to them. And they're gonna do photosynthesis while these trees, you can see that up here in Floyd County at 2,700 feet, there's still no leaves on the tree. So these guys are doing a lot of photosynthesis right now. When the leaves on the trees come in, they're not gonna get much light down here and they're gonna die back and uh, we won't see them again until next year. Now these plants are toxic and you can see that practically nothing has eaten this leaf here or any other leaves on these plants. That's because not only do they smell bad but they're they're poisonous. If you eat them, uh, what I've read is that you can have a burning sensation in your mouth, you can make you sick, and that's what it'll do to grazing animals. So this is how skunk cabbage protects itself with this nasty odor in its leaves and a chemical toxin on top of that. So right now there's no flowers. You can see just leaves. Well, that's because this plant flowered before the leaves came out. We've seen a couple plants like that this year. The flowers on this plant grew up when the ground was still frozen. And these skunk cabbage plants can do something called thermogenesis. Thermo, meaning heat. Genesis means to make. So thermogenesis, these plants can make their own heat. And that's an incredible thing. There's only a couple plants in the world that can do that. And they can generate temperatures up to 70 degrees. So in March, you can find a skunk cabbage flower, like I showed you earlier, that is coming up through the ice and through the snow. And you'll see the flower and a little circle of melting right around it. Thermogenesis. How many plants can be down? So these plants come up here in the same place every year. When they come up in the same place every year, we call them perennials. They come up every year. So their roots are down in the soil. And one of the amazing things about this plant, and again, they can do something else that no other plants can do, is they can contract their roots after when they finish growing. And so this plant, every season, plants itself deeper in the ground, if you can imagine that, because its roots will contract and pull that fibrous root matter deeper into the soil. So the more this plant grows, the deeper it gets. It's a way of surviving. Nobody can ever dig this plant out. It's get deeper and deeper every year. So I'm sitting here on this log thinking, man, this is a really special place. I'm sitting here in this uh, area full of skunk cabbage. And when I see this, I know that this place has never been plowed. It's never been bulldozed. The ground here has probably been like this for hundreds, maybe even a thousand years, unchanged. Skunk cabbage doesn't do well if you, if you try to dig it up 
or if the area that it was grown was plowed, it pretty much will never come back. It's an endangered species in the state of Tennessee. And so I think this is an amazing plant with its amazing smell and the way it protects itself from predators with its toxicity. It's amazing, strange flower that um, attracts an, uh, pollinators that think they're looking for a, a dead animal because that's what it smells like and that's what attracts them there to carry pollen. The way it melts the snow, the way it does thermogenesis, really amazing plant. I feel very lucky that I have um, uh, skunk cabbage in my backyard here and I'm glad that I got to share this with you today.